call the order of the Argus Town Council meeting. Uh, roll call. Charles Randy Sneed. Erica Parton. Sean Harley. George Knoll. Angela Resendez. Derek Jones. Lisa Mullaney. Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's start out with nomination of officers, council president and vice president. Is there any nominations for council president? I nominate Randy Sneed for council president. I second that. There's a nomination for Randy Sneed as council president. You beat him to the punch because he was going to win George. I can see it in his eyes. You're exactly right. Still can, but that's beside the point. Okay. <laughs> is, is, there, is there any <laughs> other nominations? <laughs> I'll nominate George Stoll for council president. There's the two nominations. There's a nomination for Randy Sneed and a nomination for George Knoll. Is there any other nominations for council president? Is there any other nominations for council president? If not, we'll vote on council president. All in favor of Randy Sneed being council president, signify by saying aye. 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 Three. Two. I said aye. To nay. <laughs> Randy, are you voting? You voting for yourself? No. Three to two, Randy's council president for next year. Okay. Huh? If you accept, yeah. I accept. Okay, you're it, man. Get your butt over here. I'm sitting back. I've done that for a reason. Don't worry, Randy. Well, for a reason. He did that to me one year, too. George did. Life as it is doesn't work. Hi. Okay, now we need to nominate a vice president. And I nominate Sean Harley as vice president. You're president, you can't nominate. Yes, she can. Oh. Yes, I can. Anyhow. Do we have a yeah. second? Or? I'll second that. Okay, so uh, any other nominations for vice president? Anybody else want? Anybody else want? Sean Harley. Sean does. I nominate Angela Resendez. Oh, you oh. rotten thing. Okay, so right now we have three. All right. Yep. Angela nominated Erica, and Sean nominated Angela. We all get our names said tonight, don't we? Right? <laughs> Erica. Lisa, that's right on the stone. She's like. <coughs> George, nobody wants you to have an office. It's all right with me. He's been saying he's. Ready. I know, I know. So he's he's got a lot of ready. Like a dive bomb. He's yeah. on that five year downward trend. Five year? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so See who is first? Sean. So, all in favor of Sean Harley as vice president, say aye. 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 One, two, three, four. <laughs> Do we need to have a vote on the other two? No. <laughs> Sean Harley is vice president. <laughs> Congratulations. Yay! Good job, guys. See you all. Appointment of town attorney. I nominate Derek. I second that. <laughs> Give me the agenda. Hurry up. And uh, so we have a nomination of Derek Jones for town attorney. Any other nominations? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Eric, your town attorney. Yes, Thank you, sir. and I'm glad. I, I appreciate being able to do this. Um, my job is kind of one of those things that, like, it, it's more about who you deal with and what I'm doing. And I appreciate, you know, dealing with you folks, and I like it. So well, you, you keep us on the street, and, yeah, and yeah, thank you, you, you keep us making mistakes, Eric, that we couldn't do my best. But well, you do. There's mistakes from time to time. So <laughs> no, even though we are going to make a mistake. You let us know that it's a mistake before we do it. Exactly. <laughs> Doesn't mean we don't do it, but we do it. So. <laughs> Angie. Angie. Okay, who did it? Me. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up. 
okay. Next is the minutes of 12 15 2021 regular session. <coughs> yeah, does anyone know? Uh, we have a motion to accept the minutes. Does anyone need to read them? or I do have copies. We make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll second. So we have a motion and a second to accept the meeting or the minutes of 12 15 2021 20, regular session. Any further comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are accepted. Abstain, I would Citizens' input. Mr. Who are you, sir? My name is Bob Byers. Uh, I live on the corner of East and South, 412 East South. I've got two things I want to bring up tonight. And the one has nothing to do with today's earlier incidents, but it just happened to be the first night I remember there was a council meeting. Let me start off with saying I don't think it's a bad price for the amount of services you get. But we were paying 19 a month for trash and recycle, and I saw it just went up to 19.20. Hey, you know what? For for 20 cents a month, you can't you know you can't argue that. The only thing that bothers me, and I understand each contract's a little different, and and each offer is dependent on certain variables. But I'm, con I'm confused as to why we pay 1920. Now, if I remember right, right before I got off the town council, we had a dollar increase per residence to help offset the cost of a part-time clerk employee to offset the phone calls in regards to the issues from the trash service, correct? We, we added a service charge because of the amount of, of work that the clerk's office does. Not to offset the price of an employee. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. It gotcha. was just to, we take an awful lot of phone calls for trash right. and dumpsters. And recycle. And recycle. With that said, I don't like the fact that as a community we have to pay to offset phone calls due to their mistakes, but that's whatever. I'm confused as to why we pay the amount we do especially given as far as trash we are the closest community that they serve to their landfill so there's less travel plymouth is paying just shy of 17 dollars a month for their trash and recycle service through republic and bourbon's paying 15 24 and we're sitting here paying 19 20. bourbon's how much bob 15 24. it just went up from uh, it was 1504 or 15 dollars and nine cents last year hang on here it is fifteen dollars and four cents last year and it's fifteen twenty seven this year which like i said twenty cents to me I, so it's fifteen twenty seven this year yeah fifteen twenty seven this year and they're in a five-year contract hey can i answer this yes yes okay is that trash and recycle? and recycle two time a uh, month recycle just like ours okay okay nice no. thank you the city of Plymouth has bargaining power because they have so many, okay? But the town of Bourbon it, and our contract is based on the amount of residents. So every address gets charged that amount. So ours is based on the number of homes that we have, including our commercial. Okay. Okay? So... So even if there's let's say like the house behind me is empty, does that still get counted even though they're not picking anything up there? Yes, because it is a blanket contract mm, yeah. with with them. Mm. So when when we were negotiating that, they at the time recycling was not paying. They were actually paying to come right. get it. And I think we all had that discussion when you were on the council. I believe, I believe so. And the only reason it went up by a whole 20 cents this year is because the cost of fuel went up. Oh, yeah. And I, the 20 cents doesn't bother me. It but was the, the dollar saying, amount. So it price. went from 1801 to 1820 or something. Yeah. But when we signed that five-year contract, we had that 10% up or down 
that was built in. So they're not really charging us that 10%. You know what I mean? Right. So it could have been much worse. But yeah, very true. The reason that ours is the price that it is is based on the amount of residents. Before I became clerk, there are some commercials, commercial businesses that don't have Republic in town. But they are in town, so they are entitled to. Gotcha, gotcha. But they don't because they, they chose to have other services before I became clerk. So, if per se, and we can't speak for them because they're not here, but per se, Bourbon's contract is the same as ours, it would be because we've got more homes and businesses than they do. Right. Okay. So, it, the way that it was explained during our contract negotiations was it's the amount of fuel that it takes, the amount of drivers that it takes, and you know, um, they were very upfront with their pricing. Fair enough. I just, I saw, I, I figured Plymouth, the bargaining power with how large they are. Bargaining the, power in Plymouth is greater. The price in Bourbon just flew me off, given the difference. But the other thing I have is, I live at the corner of East and South. It's Bob, be, excuse me, before oh, you go on, can I address, yeah. can, before we put this thing to bed on this yeah. trash yeah. thing? Um, I'm as upset as you are about our trash services. Um, we are still in that contract, as you know, but it's going to be a different discussion if I have anything to say about it come next time because I'm I, not pleased with our service that we're getting from them being under contract. I uh, Look at our town tonight. It is a disaster area. I know it's windy, but there's no excuse. Even without the wind, it would still look rough. And I kind of thought at first, maybe until I got that alert text thing uh, the wife sent me, <clears throat> I thought maybe they just forgot us again. I, Because there's a disclaimer, I have the snack machine at their Baroque location. Oh. So most of the time when they screw up and don't get moms like they did for three recycle times in a row, I just went in and yelled at them. And made, it made a deal, I said, I'll fill your vending machine if you empty my recycle. We and got then, actual trash sitting on Michigan Street tonight. It is trash, not recycling. Yeah. Yeah. I had to, I'm not going to lie. I had is to, it in a recycle bin or is it in a trash bin? It was in a trash bin. It was laying in the middle of Michigan Street when I came home at 3 o'clock. Okay, because the only reason I'm asking is because I've seen a lot of people dump it because recycle didn't run the week of Christmas. And a bunch of people have filled up their recycle bins with trash bags and they will not take it. Okay, so. You know. So, so explain I, this I to me. But Explain this true. to me. Trash can blowed over. It's in Michigan Street. They dump all the other trash. That guy can't get out of that truck and pick that can up to dump it and just make a mess. No, they won't. They don't have That's a bunch of crap. They don't I'm sorry. Have it wasn't just Michigan Street. No, no it's, it's all over. It's all over. My now. favorite. Drove all over town tonight. My yeah. favorite is when they get my house, the Ogo house, and the two across from us, but they miss Mom's, who's in the middle. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah. How did you manage to do that? <laughs> well, I just wanted. Yeah. I want to let you know that the trash is on my mind. And this was a bad night to bring the pricing up, but it happened to be, I found out what the other two were paying by fate, and this was the council night. But, yeah. And I don't buy the fuel thing as much as, I mean, it's farther distance from Plymouth to the landfill. That's why they drive both side the streets and fuel. I, I don't buy all that. It's all words is what it is. I think, like Lisa said, Plymouth's got bargaining power more than anything. So make so. a motion to have Derek look at the contract and see how we get out of it and then bid it out. Well, let's move on tonight. Many. We got a lot of stuff to do tonight, but that's on my list. Believe me, there's nobody else ever bid it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is. But yeah, there but are. they're clear up in Michigan or way over in North Judson or, you know. Where's Apex or whatever? That's North Judson. Judson. And the only thing that scares me with them is they'll probably want to use Republic's landfill and Republic's going to see that as an advantage taker and they're going to That'll cost us more. Where's Republic's landfill at? County line. Republic. Yeah. Republic. They don't own it. County yes, line. They do. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't own it, they yeah. 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 If they don't own it, they lease it and operate. I've been there. They own it. I've worked eleven days this year for John Lee down there. <laughs> but anyhow, I've been down there a bunch, and I've talked to all the people down there. Republic owns it. I joke with Ron. Waste management owned that. They waste got waste management. I, I joked with Ron one day about, I said, why don't you, 
see about doing the town. He goes, nope, I use all of Republic's landfills and I'm not getting right. in that war with them. And he does, he does. Yeah. He, Which, and I respect the reason why he would. Yeah, he's got Elkhart and, and South Bend. And they have, South Bend has a, um, a state, station. Uh, Way station. Well, you can dump it there and, and then they move it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he had, he uses all of theirs, so he's never going to get in a fight with them over that. No. So anyhow, is, is that true? That, you yeah. can move on to your next one if you want. The other thing, and I didn't mean to come in and rile you guys up, I'm sorry. But the other thing is I live on a 90 degree. It's not a stop sign, it's just a corner. It's fine. We've had a large increase in what I would call unfamiliar traffic, which hey, public street you can do whatever you want except um, <laughs> somebody's gonna end up in the old Sherwood house or somebody's gonna end up stuck in the cornfield if they don't slow down and when they make the corner either way usually more than anything it's when they make the corner off east on the south so in front of my house they think it's a hundred meter dash in a car and, <laughs> and I will tell you that when I come home tonight at three o'clock I have a doctor's appointment when I was coming to town on 10, the town policeman, whoever was on duty, I don't know who's on duty today, but they actually was turned off at 10 on the East Street and was going down that way. So they are patrolling. Yes. Now they can't be there 24 no, hours a day. No, they can't. And Bob, they we, are did, down. we did put up some, some signs because of the children and stuff. So we, it's all been reposted, in most of it. And it might be a little yet to still go, but most of it's done. So, yes. uh, you know, we've done. And I appreciate that. I noticed it in the last three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's and your area is not as uncommon as the right. rest of the town. I, we've got it in my neighborhood. Yeah. It, it's these people just don't care anymore what they do. They just drive around like they yep. don't have anything to follow. I can't figure out why they want to use my my road as a cut through because you got to go through the rough tracks and it's not exactly a straight cut through. But know. hey, they can do that. At the so anyhow, we'll we'll look into that. Okay. Perfect. Thank you guys. Appreciate right. it. I'm Thank going home. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. See ya. Okay. Moving on then. Old business. Attorney report. Okay. Only a couple things to let you guys know about. One on that Mora property at 326 West Church Street. We've got the bids uh, to the pilot bid. I'm sorry. The, the advertisement for the bids is to the pilot. Bids are due January 17. Uh, we're going to open those at our next meeting on January the 19th, so just heads up on that. Um, the other thing I'll let you know about, we talked about the farm lease. Mark and I are meeting next week and talking a little bit more about that, so we should have some kind of a recommendation, or at least what he or I think we want to do or might want to do about that. Um, there's also a resolution, it's the one that Lisa had right before our meeting that I'll go ahead and tackle that since it's not anywhere else on the agenda and I have one more thing after that but this resolution is basically uh, allowing the president of the town council to execute any in doubt agreements as it pertains to grant programs and it's just something that she needs to have done this is very similar to the oh, we had a resolution uh, pertaining to the, the sale and the easement of that very small piece of property for the sidewalk next to the police station but this is new, it wasn't in the packet, but I have taken a look at that and I, I don't have any issue or problem with that. We need it for the community crossing grant right now. I'll we'll make a motion to pass resolution 2022-02. second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, only on ordinance. Hold oh, back, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion to pass resolution number 2022-02. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other further comments? Or? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Resolution number 2022-02 is passed. Get it with Rangy. <laughs> the last thing I have, guys, um, and, and actually before I can go there, but um, I've got some stuff going on this evening. I'm probably going to have to bug out of here by about e Um But other than that, we had talked about the cemetery mowing specifications, and I sent those to you guys in an email back uh, December the 28th. Mm -hmm. I think George responded and had maybe a, a 
a potential change. Uh, to basically talk about mowing things within four days rather than seven days prior to certain holidays that are listed there. But these things are up for discussion. Um, this is really what we had the last time we let this out for bids. I've obviously tweaked things in terms of dates. The, the date for the bids, I don't know if, if that's, to me that I thought maybe kind of late. That would be late. Okay, and so again, we can change that. Um, anything else you guys want to change and address, you can. But there's a draft of it at least. Can we put something in there about reading it? Like? We do. Okay. I just want to make sure that we have adequate. Here we go. Lawn mowing shall include me to fund as regular mowing, weed eating around all trees, grave markers, signs, and other objects. So that's what okay, it says so now. If they don't do it, covers then everything. It, it would be out of compliance, right? They would be in breach of the agreement, okay. yes. Does that have George's updates in it? No. no. It does not. It says seven days. And again, I'm not I wasn't gonna make a ton of changes because one person, two people, eight people comment. Yeah. Um, but right now it does say seven days if you want to make that four. I kinda like George's thought process behind that to be honest. Yeah, with you. he keeps it especially near the holidays and stuff. It does keep it looking nicer. So yep. uh, and those holidays just so that everybody's clear. It's Mother's Day, Memorial Day, Father's Day, July fourth, and Labor Day. It's, you know, it's kind of the five big the big ones. Mm -hmm. So it's not overly onerous, I don't think. But. Lisa, I think you just said you had some things you'd like maybe changed in it. No, I, I I like George's changes. I like it to be four days. The only, you know, if it needs it. Um, if we go through a drought season or something, you don't want them out there picking out. The right, I sure you hope that common sense comes in. Yeah. yeah. That kind of, yeah. But you know how, how it has been, the buckhorns will take over and help me. To put tall and grass be after tall. Need to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just really want to make sure that if we get it, I mean, the guy that we used to have was very good until he got COVID, and then it went downhill, obviously for months. And the complaints are numerous. So I just want to make sure that if they are not doing a good job, since we are bidding it and they're not doing a good job that we have a way of getting out of that. Well, and not only does it talk about the weeding, it also says all work shall be done and completed in a neat and workmanlike manner. Well, you know, that's vague. Right. Um, but, I mean, if by okay. an objective standard, you go out there and look at that. I think it's, I think it's just put junk. something in there about not state. mowing during the funeral services? Would you have? Okay. Is that been a problem? Yeah. You that been? Yeah. yeah. Lawn mowing shall not take place during any memorial okay. or burial service. All right, sorry. <laughs> she didn't. I think it should stay somewhere near if it does not already. I'm just already. thinking of the complaints I've gotten, um, so. But yeah. that's what I'm saying. Grass, yeah. grass yeah. clippings should not be left on the water. I don't have a problem with it. I would like to see us open them in February, if at all possible. The and the only reason for that is because they start April 15th. Right. So they need to prepare right. and, and so get. So we want to open it the first? Probably the second meeting in February. Would right. that be doable? Okay, so we're going to turn in bids sometime in February. I'll figure out the dates on this thing, but in terms of this first cemetery board meeting that would be in February, that would be the second or the 16th. Well, that'll be coming up here in a minute. Yeah, it'll be coming up here in a minute. On the okay. Can we take? Can we table that and make these edits that we just talked about until our next meeting this month, or do we need to do something with that tonight so well, you can prepare? I'm going to say this, that yeah. we better have it nailed down next meeting so that we can get it in the paper. Especially if we're looking at a February summer or another. Well, it depends deadline. on when the meetings are. Right. So, so I'm going to pay attention to cemetery board meetings. Mm -hmm. and I like George's changes and things that were said here tonight. And, you know, I think that there should be something in there if it's not that, you know, when he's done mowing, there should not be any grass clippings left on markers or grave. You know what I mean? They should go there. They should yes, roll they, off. Yes, we need to have it so that there should be no grass on the grave markers. Is it there? Yeah. Is it in there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I looked through it really quickly at work. And how many days do we have to get out of it? Because last time we had like 60 days, and 60 days worth of mowing is, you know, <laughs> that's a lot of grass. Well, it's a one year contract. Mm -hmm. And there's no really getting out of it. Well, we can fire them, right? Well, if 
Yeah, if, if they breach the agreement, then you can declare a termination of the agreement because of the breach. But that I think, good. to be honest, at first you would need to give them some notice of the fact that, hey, there's an issue problem. I would do it in writing, make sure that they right. can document that they received it. And if it's not corrected, then I would say we're going to terminate. Okay. I just didn't want it to be like 60 days or something. There's, there's, well, no, and, and because when I think about that, I would. I don't think the town wants to be in a position of lawnmower guy says, hey, this is more than I wanted to chew. Um, so he decides in June, I'm done. Right. Here's your 60 day notice and then we're, we're stuck. No, um, no. So, no. Who? There's no out. It, it runs from April 15 and November 1. Okay. That's how I put it together. All right. So yeah, work on the dates. Okay. okay. That's all I have. We we want to pass that with the changes in tonight, Bert. Uh, you can't other than the dates. How about this guy that I will? We should be okay in terms of if we do this at the next meeting and then we open bids at the second meeting in February. Mm -hmm. We should be all right. I just want to make sure we don't crunch you for time and be able to get everything done that we need to do to no, put up the bids. Okay, no. These are simple, so. just a 10 minute change stuff here. Okay. <clears throat> so what are we going to do with the same I'll make a motion to accept the, the return report. Return report. No. Or no. Not yet. The cemetery, cemetery mowing. <laughs> with the changes. With the changes, yes. I'll second. So we have a motion and a second to accept the cemetery mowing bid um, with changes. No, not the bid, the contract guys. The contract. contract. They're the bid specs, is what it is. Yeah, the bid specs. Specs. Right, okay. Put the Any further comments? All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Hey, Derek. Okay. So I will. Insert dates. I'm going to send that to you guys. We're going to get that published probably before the next meeting and give it to you approve those changes. But okay. Thank all you. we're going to do is change some dates. Derek, is there any update on the House of Graver situation? Yeah, um, kind of. Um, over Christmas break, I did review the complaint that Clevenger, and I've told Clevenger that we wanted to be on board with basically litigation as opposed to going another route. Um, he had sent a complaint to me December-ish, and I reviewed that. I had a few changes. I sent it back to him, and that's where it's at right now. Everything, look, everything looks... Yeah, I mean, there's nothing fatal in what he had. It was just a matter of, and again, you get two attorneys going back and forth. I mean, yeah. you're gonna, I like this this way, and you like something something else. So, uh, but no, it's back to him, and that's, I would guess that'll be on file well before the end of the month. Okay. So that's holding up that process for out on this corner, isn't it? There is not. There's not. Okay. <laughs> that's simply a matter of basically a, the sequence of timing in terms of when the deed got reported that it conveyed it back to the town versus when all the documents got signed. Documents got signed before the conveyance back to the town. So MDOT looks at that and says, well, at that point in time, you didn't have authority to do that. All right, MDOT, you're technically correct. So that's why we have to re-sign all of those documents, which was the offer, uh, the acceptance of the offer, the deed, disclosure form, etc. Same documents. And if you recall, we already passed a resolution yeah. given the president of the town council, Randy, to sign those things. So we don't have to go through this process right. again. It's just a matter of, all right, got to re-sign everything again. And you can't use that same concept. You don't get your out. Mm. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to make a motion to accept the attorney report. <laughs> Was that the first time? Here we have a motion and a second to accept attorney report. Any further comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Other old business. I have two things if no one has anything. 
Uh, I'd like an update on uh, the guy that hit the uh, cemetery thing. Has anything been done about that? No. Are we going to be able to do anything about it? Okay, so for the, those of you that don't know, um, so uh, there was a guy that ran off the road and hit one of the Maple Grove markers. Alan Earl said he has pictures of those markers being there since before 1938. He demolished the one side. It is totally down and on the ground. Um, the ball that was on top is cracked. Um, it is. Um, I have, I'm trying to get a hold of the police report without paying for it because our insurance will pay for it. But um, I have Ed Barkus working on that. He's got a couple of shared friends and we're trying, I'm trying to get a hold of that. But we're going to have to find somebody that can put those stones back together in somewhat of a similar fashion to the other one, mm -hmm. which is probably going to be a very expensive thing and I'm not sure that insurance will cover it all. So the person that hit it will be responsible. Well, that's why my question was, can we sue him? And if he doesn't, let's just for scenario say he doesn't have insurance on his automobile. Can we put a lien on his property then? Well, the first step is getting a judgment. Any we'll get judgment, a, get, get a judgment a lien on real estate. Right. But was he charged criminally for any kind of thing? I don't know. I, I'm That's trying. why we're trying to get the police report. So yeah. this happened like la the 28th of Whenever the fire uh, December. Oh, and then, this happened. Yeah, and yeah. then everything, yeah. the holidays happened and, and right. stuff. So I've been trying to call Marshall County. I called twice. I left messages. Nobody has called me back. So today I asked Corey to try and get it for me. Um, in the meantime, Ed was in my office, Ed Barkas, and he said, I have a friend in the Sheriff's Department. So he is you know, trying to get it, so. Let's, let's get more information about it, but then okay. most definitely you can pursue me either on a negligence theory or if it's criminal, that'd be great because then that's part of what's called restitution mm -hmm. and we'll let somebody else handle it. Okay. Well, it's just a, it's a motor vehicle accident, really, in person property. That's negligence, that's fine. Yeah. But I do think that we should. Uh, Holy smokes. Yeah, yeah it's completely. Probably it's send a, a thank you letter to the plow driver. Jeez. Because without him, we would have never even known who did right. it. Wow. I have, why don't you do that? <laughs> send, send a, and let them know we appreciate them. Yeah, uh, it was a Marshall County. Yeah, because he would have went on hold and left it, left it go. Because, okay. yeah. Okay. So my other thing <laughs> on old business, uh, so as everybody knows, Val Harley has always been in charge of our uh, food truck Fridays. And uh, she contacted me today. Bourbon is uh, wanting to set up their calendar. And they're wanting to know if we're still going to do one and when we're going to do it. So I, on behalf of Val and myself who, and, and Mark, uh, who kind of ran everything as far as getting everything set up last year, of course, the fire department we, and, and the town, we could have done it without all. But anyhow, we have to get the people to come in. Uh, we're asking permission to have uh, Food Truck Friday again this year, and also, can we still have it on the second Friday of the month? And it'll be just for uh, June, July, August, and September. Are you gonna move it to the downtown square? Well, that's... Uh, Pending when it gets done, yeah. we don't... If the downtown square is done, the answer is yes. If not, we might even decide to, if at all possible, <laughs> is to go south. Oh. Jamie's saying no, so anyhow, I guess we're not going to decide that. I was just looking at more. It is too much to move for a temporary. Yeah, because push yeah. comes to show you know, one month where you have it down there. I mean, that should yeah, be. Okay, we can do that. That's fine. So, anyhow, that's why I'm. I make a motion to allow to have a food truck Friday, same as last year. I'll second that. So, we have a motion and a second to allow the uh, food truck Friday to. Uh, continue on uh, the second Friday of every month for the four months. Is that right, George? Mm -hmm. Any other comments or discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you on behalf of all of us that put this on. Thank you guys for <laughs> the work you do. Well, she's already getting the uh, things out to all the people. New business. 
2021 meeting schedule. Does anyone have any comments? <coughs> yes. Mr. Uh, Hall. If possible, I know Sean and I sometimes struggle to get here anyway, but I'd like to move the meeting. Go ahead and have the meetings the same night, the first and third Wednesday. We'll move them up to 7 o'clock. Incorporate cemetery meetings in a regular session meeting instead of having just a regular cemetery board meeting. So if there's an issue and it comes up, we can just put it in as business in every meeting if we have to. Instead of waiting a month at a time, right. it can, we can, yes, people come in, we can take care of the problem sooner. And, and you know, okay, we're going to business, we always cancel out a meeting. Well, I might be that one meeting and somebody wanted something and they show up and we're out of the meeting. But, um, those are my thoughts. George, do you, do you have any thoughts on still continuing the workshops on the second Wednesday of the month? Yeah, I would. 6.30 still an adequate time for that, or should we move that up? I know that'd be struggling to spring for me, but... Well, you'd, you'd, have, to, you'd have to move the police commission, then. Just letting you know. No, only on the end of the months. Or we could have a workshop at the, the end first of ones. every meeting if we needed to. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's up to everybody. I mean, at the end of the meeting. Like, if we have a six, 7 o'clock and we get done at 8 o'clock, you could have your workshop after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, that was just the thought as far as incorporating a cemetery board and moving the meetings up a half hour. Ladies? Sounds good to me. Plus, you might get out earlier for wrestling. Yeah, come on. No. Or is it going to be harder for you to get out of the port for a half hour earlier? Well, I don't know. Especially when the time change. Well, that's no yeah, difference really I mean, now. Yeah. That's why I'm. That's why I'm pausing. But that's the only reason that I'm pausing. So you're going to take up all my time watching us. Oh, okay then. I'll make a motion to keep the meetings on the first and third Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Move them up to seven o'clock and incorporate all cemetery business and the regular meetings that meeting. we'll In a workshop. In a workshop. Um, and the third Wednesday. The second, the second, the first one. The second Wednesday. Before the meeting? After. After the meeting. After. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we have a motion to keep the town meetings on the first and third Wednesday of every month, changing the time to, to 7 o'clock and incorporating cemetery board meeting uh, within our meeting. If there's anything that comes up, we'll just put it on the agenda. And then also on the third or the second meeting of the month, we will, uh, if all needed, we will have a workshop after the meeting. We have a motion and a second. Any further comments on that? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion Okay, here's a big one, guys. Mm -hmm. Appointment of utility clerk. Do we have anyone qualified? I make a motion to appoint Lisa as utility clerk. Second. Lisa Mullaney. Third. Third. Fourth. 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 Okay, department liaison appointments. Police department has been Sean Harley in the past. Park department is Erica. Mm -hmm. Pardon. Utilities, uh, Sean and myself have been kind of doing them kind of together. And redevelopment commission, I think, was yeah. given to Angela. So uh, I was fired, but we don't have that anymore. Hmm? I was fired, but we don't have that anymore. Oh yeah. Well, I was EMT. We don't have that anymore. Well, so kind of say he's your liaison. He's your liaison. I'm liaison. Yeah. Fire terrorists. You can take yeah. utilities and be. Well, we don't have any liaison in the fire territory anymore. No, but he yeah. he's our man. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, like, where am I, chop liver? No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. You said utilities, so. Well, okay, so we. All right, so utilities has been, uh, like I said, Sean and I. 
So George, would you uh, have any problem now being the utilities liaison? No, no. John, is that fine with you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so somebody want to make a motion then? I just, I just, just the point that we don't need a I, motion. Okay, so as of right now then, the police department will be John Harley, Park Department, Erica Parton, Utilities, George Knoll, and the Redevelopment Commission will still be Angela Resendez. Just so everybody knows that Randy, as president, is liaison to all departments. If somebody, if they don't like what I say, they go straight to him. Right. They go straight to the president. He is a liaison to every department. So, he still gets the brunt of it. Only for the police You got this on purpose. Okay, we have another ordinance coming up. This is Ordinance 20, 22-01, it's transfer of funds. Lisa, hey, if I could explain. You want to um, explain that to us, please? Yes, so the first transfer of funds that I'm asking for is from the general fund community development to the park grant fund. You guys had said that you would pay 250,000 to the DNR grant and then you said that you would cover all of stellar costs for Folker Park. So um, the DNR grant is now completed. Um, if you look on your fund report, you'll see that it's like 190 or $232,000 something short. I'm getting a payment from the state for $116,080, so I did take that off. But I, the town council still needs to cover the rest for the stellar and for the rest of the DNR grant. So that's where that money is going. The other one is um, at the end of the year, we said that we would discuss the EMS fees or the EMS money that was in the ambulance fund. If you remember, we cut our pie away from the general fund and gave a lot of our tax revenue to the EMS to hire part-time EMTs. We did not have a lot of help and we had an excess at the end of the year. Um, so even though you guys, you voted to pay for all the life packs, you voted for the Lucas devices, the power cots, you paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for new equipment for the ambulance. But this is the money that was left over at the end of the last year. Um, I would like to see that go back to the general fund because you did make all those purchases and I think that that money should come back to where it originally came from. Is that the 189388 Yeah. Now, at any time, correct me, Lisa, we could give money to that territory if we wanted to on top of your tax base as a donation of like, okay, you're going to go buy a truck or equipment. You could do that legally? You could, but I think that you'd have, I don't know how the DGLF would handle their tax the rate nightmare. then because they're going to have to report at the end of every year what they take in. So, I didn't know how that equipment fund was going to turn out. Though. Well, and so some things to think about while well, we may spend money building upgrade. However, we come across whether that's what Oh, that's fine. I was just asking. That yeah, question. but that. I don't have a problem putting it back in the So she asked me I what I thought. You know, that. when we got into this, we thought we didn't, we'd all give something. Uh, well, we finally found out we get that 10%. Uh, cash reserve. We didn't know that at the start. So they'll actually get five hundred or fifty-seven thousand some odd dollars in year one is that cash <laughs> reserve. So the fire territory will have a cash reserve. Plus they're self-funded. Uh, plus they're regular. Plus we got a hundred percent funding of that budget that we prepared. So until that first year, and they all know the three of them know that we really don't know where we're going to sit. I mean, I think I figured good. <laughs> so I I don't see that excess cash being needed. Uh, they also I, have their equipment fund. The fund. I just asked yeah. that question. They'll also have that equipment fund. If somebody would ask me, I wanted to know what the town was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's, that's, that's all I wanted to know. So that'll so probably come up like that. One of the towns to donate a life pack. Or well, and that'll yeah. probably come up with that building here at some point. We're going to probably have to do something. Once we get that other building built, look at it. So, so how is that building set up? Is the town leasing that to the fire territory? We haven't got anything yet. Okay. 
but I want to let you know that when we did cut that slice of pie and it went over to the EMS fund, we didn't get it back. We didn't get it back. So we did they, give. They, yeah, so we yeah. are giving every year because um, Baker Tilly had to consider how much money we were giving to the EMS when they did all their calculations. So they didn't give us our slice back and then figure those calculations. Those calculations were with that slice in there. That's the only way I can explain it. That you know, so we are still giving more, even though they're even amounts now. That's how the tax rate stayed so low is because we did give more in the long run. If that makes sense. Well, I make a motion to uh, suspend the rules and pass ordinance twenty twenty two dash zero one transfer of funds on all three meetings. We'll so we have a motion and a second to uh, suspend the rules and pass ordinance number 2022-01 on all three readings. Any further discussion on this? I just one. Lisa, can you just give me a little bit more definition on the section one part with the police grant? <coughs> We're needing $2,300 to the police department for the grant? Yes, I don't. Um, we have gone over... It was for the OPO and the DUI task force. Um, somehow last year it got screwed up. $8 million was sent to the town of Bremen and um, because they used to administer the grant for Marshall County. So $8 million was sent to the town of Bremen. Bremen said they didn't realize they had it. Um, and then when they, all the other entities didn't get paid, the Bremen said, well, we're not administering this grant, so they sent it back to the state. Then the state had to send it to Marshall County, who's now administering the grant. Somehow, in between all of that, that came up $2,000, $2,300 short. We've been over every check that came in. We've been over every hour that Aaron Yergin, he's been in charge of that. He's turned in. Somehow we're just at $2,300 in the middle of that. So I'm like, let's clear that fund. Now that they've got it straightened out, let's clear it. And then next, because they're gonna, they're getting ready to start their DUI and LPO grants again. So. So do you feel, do you feel that there is a breakdown of keeping track of accurate records on our end, or is it just a miscommunication all the way around? I mean, it's something I need to address the police commission. No, I have it. tried to figure it out, Sean. I mean, like I said, Aaron has brought me over the records he sent in. We we went over the checks that came in. They match, but for some reason there was a twenty three hundred dollar discrepancy. And, and I don't know if it was there the year before, I did not look. I just figured let's wipe that out, okay. you know, and then move on, so. So it is possible, could have just been a carryover even then? Yeah, I mean, I would have to look at it, but Very I, was, I just done. saw those three line items and I was like, let's just get them zeroed out. Good enough, year. thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Any further comment than that? Yeah, spell check. All in favor say aye. 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 Pass. Ordinance pass. Ordinance number 2022-01 is passed. Now we have a resolution of 2022-01 power tracker. And it keeps going down. This is a rate adjustment. This went up. This, this, one this is not. This is the first time it's not a negative number, and I'll let Jamie explain that one. And we had a four percent increase this year to us, so I think I sent an email out to you a while back about that. But second year in a row, we've had a four percent increase. Last year, we were able to absorb it, but we can't do it again this year. So four percent is pretty small amount, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Really, when you look at our rates are back. With, with what they're charging us to where we were in 2017. It's kind of been a downward mounts right. coming back up again, so. So we're gonna have a party to celebrate getting a new uh, CEO. we are gonna invite us all to a party. <laughs> I, I doubt it. We'll see, we'll see who it is. Make a motion to pass resolution 2022-01, power tracker. Great. 
We have a motion and a second to pass resolution 2022-01 power tracker. Any further comments? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passed. Resolution passed. Other new business. Anything else? Mark, anything from you? New business? Yeah, um, new business, George. I have a new business, yeah. Um, COVID policy. The president has the right. That was voted to that. So now uh, you're getting it <clears throat> for the town. You make the decisions on the quarantine and do they need vaccinated, don't they need vaccinated. Um, well, not so much that, but that's a mandate. Which I said, if I had anything, I would never force anybody to test. Um, do we pay them for being off of COVID if they're vaccinated? Do we not pay them if they're. I'm going to put the new CDC guidelines, it's down to five days. Five days. Now, if, say your wife has it, it's five days quarantine for her, five days quarantine for you then, so there's a 10 day quarantine with close contact. I thought they were in consecutive five days. It would be 10 days total. And then if you are positive and you come back with those symptoms and you wear a mask for five days. I just got it two hours ago, the new mandates. But um, I had just talked to Jamie earlier about, and Lisa, about what, we, what I was going to implement <clears throat> to do. But that's totally up to you guys. I mean, I'm fine. So as, as the president, do I have to take this, or can I pass this on to someone else? No. Uh -huh, no, it's all yours. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember if Can I order? talk to my lawyer? It's a, it's, it's a resolution, <clears throat> I think. You need to change the resolution to give somebody else the yeah. authority to make those determinations. Now it says, this is a CDC quarantine guideline, regardless of vaccination status. A co-worker who tests positive may not return to work until five days have passed from a positive test. If the co-worker has no symptoms or if their symptoms are resolving, a negative test is not required to turn, return to work following quarantine, but the co-worker is required to mask at all times for five more days. Contact tracing. Co-workers who test positive must identify any co-workers they had close contact the previous two days before onset of symptoms or asymptomatic two days prior to test. Private contact workers, uh, pets close contact, diagnosed co-workers have them follow the quarantine guideline listed in the next. Unvaccinated co-worker who is close contact with someone diagnosed with COVID may not return to work until five days have passed since the date of last close contact. A coworker is required to mask at all times for five days following return to work. A vaccinated coworker who is in close contact with someone diagnosed with COVID does not need to quarantine unless the coworker becomes systematic or tests positive themselves. And so that means if a coworker is being tested on COVID, they have to stay home until the results come in and quarantine co-worker to remain home until symptom free for at least 24 hours. Those are the new guidelines that we just got to get down. Uh, um, CDC. So, that was what we, we just talked about. Right. That's what it is today. What we talked about earlier today was if you're vaccinated, and you got COVID, the town will pay you the 10 days the first time. If you're not vaccinated, you're not gonna get paid for COVID right. the first time. 10 days quarantine. That was it. That was our new rule. We were gonna right. follow through with the town right now. Because it's getting to the point where you're gonna get it. Somebody's gonna get something and they're gonna blame COVID for it. Right. You don't have to have a negative test to come back as long as you're not symptomatic. But there again, it's totally up to you guys. We only yeah. have a few employees that have not received some sort of COVID pay. But they have not received any COVID pay. Mm -hmm. 
regardless of back status. We never asked that before. But I'm just saying we only have a few of those now. Well, I don't think what George just described there, as far as what you're probably you know the paid for the first time is that yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable. Um, that's my take on it. Personally, I'm not going to say what I personally think about this whole thing, but um, <clears throat> I understand we're a public entity and we have to have some kind of policy. I get that, and I could I could go along with what George just said. I feel that's that they what should be. Randy wants to do. I feel first time that they, you know everybody should have a chance because we, I mean, the town guys have been working good with us. And, um, you know, it's it's hard to stay away from it. Believe me. I mean, especially. Yeah, you, you don't but know. is that regardless of back status? That's up to you guys. I don't care how you do it now. I mean, that's well, up to Randy. I'm just asking. Can you get paid out once, regardless? Or are you saying vaccinated. vaccinated no more? You have to be vaccinated to get paid. That's the question. I think after the first time, you should have to be vaccinated. Well, you wouldn't be after three, but it'd be over with. Right. You're only going to get one chance. Right. You're going to get one chance, period. So you only get paid for it once. Right. That's his call. That's no, I'm. I'm <laughs> you want to get paid for it? I have another question on that, though. I get a guy that comes in sick. Cool, whatever. How do you handle that? Make him wear a mask. If it's not COVID. How do I know it's not COVID though? Without having having him get tested, you don't. Right now, right. getting it's tested not is not. Yeah. I mean, he, it could be weeks. Right. Uh, These test centers are all. You're, mo you're, you're, you're most susceptible three days, days before any symptoms come on, and what four days after symptoms. Those are your, those are your two main times of your. Here, here's my thing. I've got guy. I've had people that come in sick. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can keep working, I can keep working. Well, but then they're working with everybody else, and they don't want to get sick, or the, you know what I mean. It, it just for Lisa and I, it turns into a, it, it can be a mess. I would say if they have a fever, they shouldn't even be allowed to come to work. Yeah, if they have a fever, they shouldn't. That, that would be so how do I my stand that? on it. Do I That's send them to the EMS? Though. That should be blanket. See you there. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. Thanks, Happy Derek. Year. Thanks for everything, Derek. See you next time. I mean, I mean that you. to me is I get first born. <laughs> you get hanged it, bud. <laughs> <laughs> to me, if they if they have a fever, they don't have any business coming to work, especially do with COVID around right now. Do we have the right to take their test? Yes, you do. Um, okay, so we do yeah. get a thermometer. Yeah. Oh, you can get one of those. Get well, one of those. Do we do that, or do I send them over to the EMS now that we have somebody here all well, the time? You know what? Didn't think about that. Let's do that. Let's let's let the guys over there. They're trained. They're trained. Let's let them take their temperature. If it's if it's they got a temperature, then they they go home to they can come back and get back down. Uh, like me, my temperature normally runs about 96. I, if I ever get up 98, that's a fever for me. But that's just me. So well, my, my problem with that, Brandon. Okay, well, it's not my yeah. problem with that process, so to speak. Is where, where's your cutoff? Do you let the guy walk in, get back to everybody else before you take his temperature? What's the process for that? Okay, here's, just here's the thing, most places out and about um, that are still worried about COVID, you go in, before you even clock in, you take your temperature. Yeah, if someone comes in, go ahead, well, I'll listen to you first, go ahead. My employer has several stations that are mounted on a wall, but you have to check your temperature upon entering the building at yeah. the start of your shift. It tells you if green or red. If you're red, you're gone. Yeah. That's just the way it is. If it's green, you check your you're good. Write the numbers down, and you're there. So what what do the guys have over there? Do they have the digital thermometers? I really don't know what they have on the ambulances. What do they, they have, have the in the ambulance? They have digital thermometers. They I mean, have the good ones. Yeah, but do you want? Okay, so you want the well, EMS guy over, over here first? at seven o'clock no. every morning going? Tip, 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 you know, Not I that mean, he has anything to else to do. do. No. Randy also got to think. What happens if that ambulance is out in the call when you? Right. Got no. I, 
I mean, you walk into the hospital, the St. Joe Hospital, front thing at the main registration desk, there is an iPad, and it literally takes your temperature. Mm -hmm. so, Not, but I went in yesterday, I went in yesterday, and this is what happened. I walked up there, and she says, what can I do for you? I said, I'm here for a blood draw. She goes, have you had uh, COVID in the last two weeks? I go, no. She says, have you been tested in the last two weeks? I go, no. She says, okay, go sit down. Oh, they're not taking temperature. They're not doing nothing. Okay, so why don't we just say that, like, a supervisor can take your temperature, mm -hmm. you know? Well, give them the gun and let them do it. Let's let's do that. Yeah. J Jamie's been around enough yeah. people, he's, and he knows. He can just go, beep, beep, beep. So, and then you guys are giving me more. Having had, go having had COVID myself, yeah. hmm? I didn't run a fever till my fourth day. Yeah, that does happen. Yeah, I had already tested fever. positive. Well, I, but for four I days, I never had a fever, and then I only had a slight fever. I was good. I swear. Well, I can't I say temperatures. I had to change sheets. Yeah, I had to change sheets like every other day. <laughs> and they're saying with this, this, this latest variant. Okay, here's what we're going to do for right now. Since I'm since George thinks that I should do this, I yes. personally would like to give that part back to George. <laughs> <laughs> but since I have to do this, <clears throat> whatever George says. Jamie is the supervisor of most of the employees. Lisa is the supervisor of the ladies in the office. You guys are responsible for these people's temperature. If you think they're sick, being taken. If there's if they have a temperature, you send them home. If they get the COVID, they'll get paid one time and one time only. Whether they've had 29 booster shots or whatever, it doesn't matter. And then uh, we'll go by the guidelines of uh, whatever Marshall County goofy guy up there. What's his name? So it's 10 um, days? Is it 10 days? Dr. Holland. Yeah, Derek's going now. Is it, is it 10 five days? Five days and five days. Five days and five days. Five days and five, at five days of quarantine, five days. So we're going to go by the CDC recommendation. Right. Yes. So if it changes, we can kind of If it changes, that. we'll get together again and okay. go from there. Fair enough. Well, what, the police department included in this or no? Police department's included in this. Okay, and you can in, let them. I'll send them a note okay. in the morning. Anything else on new business, Mr. Null? He's got nothing. <laughs> can read them. Okay. The other thing, authorization of payment of budgeted donations. Is it that gets, like to the library? gets it out of the end of the year, uh, so we don't have to do it at every meeting. Right. You know, like the library. The library. You budgeted the money. Right. It's in the, it's There's in the budget. There's no library. So I sent them out today in an email. Yeah, we and I get it. And um, so we give $250 to the American League. We give $3,000 to the Council on Aging. We give $3,000 to the Humane Society. And right now you have $8,000 budgeted this year for the festival. Those are the only donations that are built into our budget. So what we want to do, guys? Um, I make the motion that we authorize payment of budgeted donations for 2022. And second. We have a motion and a second to authorize payment of budgeted donations. Any further comments? Yeah. Um, I'm okay with that this year. Last year, if you guys remember, we had uh, the entities come in and give us a kind of a report on what their activities have right. been in the yeah. town. And I would like to see that again in another year from now. I'm okay skipping it this year. Okay. But I would like to see that next year, so maybe we can make a note to send them notice at the end of December to plan on if we want to do this the first meeting again to show up and give us some or send us a report or something that we can see well, what their activities were. We'll need to do that before the budget. Well, also these well, we these have been this way since God so knows when. Well. Maybe you think about that Humane Society contract and maybe up that donation if they're doing a good job. Well, that's kind of why I want the reports back from to see, you know, if that's... I mean, these have been the same amounts for... Right. Probably... Since Patty Jones. Since yeah, be, before that, so... If we just hand out with nothing back, and to me that's not really a good use of public right. funds to okay. not have any accountability. But other than that, I'm okay. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Does anybody pass. have that first page of that on this side? Claims. You know, you can start doing that for one last time to do that. Huh? So we don't really even have to do that. She always just does it. What's that? She doesn't even have to read those. Not necessarily, but um, she can read those. Nice Gives her something to do. Oh, yeah. We pay it with clear. You're making some brownie points for this meeting, I'm telling you. <laughs> Starting it off right. <laughs> So these claims are from December 13th through the end of the year. I just wanted to clean out the end of the year so there are no January claims in this docket. Um, the end of the year claims total $712,385.12. Says 21. What are you talking about? What says 21? $712,385.21. 21 cents, yeah. You said 12. Oh, well. Dyslexic. Um, <laughs> go ahead. That's it? That's it. We have a motion to accept the claims. So moved. Second? Second. We have a motion and a second to accept claims from December 13th to December 31st, 2021. All in favor say aye. 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 Claims passed. Yeah. Angie, you're up. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion. <laughs> Second to adjourn.